Hey, E, got a sec? Sure thing, Kathy. What's up? No point. I showed it to her on the computer. So what am I supposed to do with this? I don't know. I thought it might help you find the place where that picture was taken. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. I should get back to the investigation. Okie dokie. All right, I'm off. Peace out, E. Okie dokie. Good luck and see you later. We meet again, Mr. Homeless Guy. Homeless? That's the worst thing I ever heard of, and totally untrue. So, what's up with the trash can? Digging for treasure? Well, uh, I'm just going through a rough patch. By the way, you owe me ten bucks. Nah, you agreed to seven. You're busting my balls here. Better get those balls checked out in this clinic, then. So cold, like a stake through the heart. Hmm, what do they call you anyway? Gober. Everyone calls me Gober. All right, I'm Kathy. Pleasure to meet you. So, what's your story anyway? My story? Yeah, don't all bums have a story? For your information, this is all just a dry streak in my showbiz career. Is that so? I don't recognize you at all. I used to have more hair. That, I actually believe. Come on, man. Frankie Gold is my stage name. Surely you must have heard of me. Not really, no. Oh, come on. I have starred in dozens of Hollywood movies. The Silence of the Lambert, Jacob's Bladder, The Usual Surprises, Natural Bald Killers. Not ringing any bells. Kids these days, no appreciation for quality cinema. Breaks my heart. So, tell me about this acting career of yours. What about it? Tell me about The Silence of Lambert. Lawrence Lambert, a real estate agent, suddenly turns mute overnight. For weeks, he tries to communicate with customers using a self-invented sign language, only to realize that true love means no communication at all. He marries his housekeeper, who only knows two words in English, yes and clean. In the end, Lawrence dies of a heart attack in the arms of his lovely wife, Consuelo Lambert Vasquez. Based on a true story. I'm not sure I want to know what Jacob's Bladder is about, but I'm gonna ask anyway. Jacob's Bladder, the tragic story of Jacob Cobb, a schizophrenic man who forms an imaginary romantic relationship with his bladder. During long and joyful monologues on the can, he starts referring to his nether regions by the name of Jenny. Sadly, before Jacob has a chance to elope with his sweetheart, he gets committed to an asylum due to increasingly erratic behavior. After a big fight with his paramour, Jacob refuses to pee for a week, and he dies from a ruptured bladder. Give me the rundown on the usual surprises. A lighthearted comedy taking place during a surprise birthday party of 34-year-old Sid McBacon. The story is told from eight different perspectives to keep the audience guessing who the protagonist actually is. The movie ends with the biggest surprise of them all. Sid suddenly dies of an epileptic seizure. I guess it's more of a dark comedy. Why do you always die at the end of your movies? Typecasting. Natural bald killers? 
It's a dystopian vision of the future where people are valued by the quality of their hair. The protagonist, Eddie Zephyr, turns bald in high school. One day, he has simply had enough of all the teasing and the bullying, and he completely snaps and heads out on a scalping spree in search of the perfect head of hair. Eddie makes his way to Mexico for an illegal hair transplant. However, he has an adverse reaction to the anesthesia, and he dies on the operating table. Oh, never mind. Not the cultured type. I understand. Okay, I'm off. Bye! <coughs> hey! I have enough cancer as is! <laughs> Sorry about that, buddy. Excuse me, nurse? Hey, nurse! <sighs> yeah? Try not to strain yourself. Whatever. What do you want? I'm here to see Charles Wade. Never heard of him. Anything else? Bullshit. I know he's here. Listen, it's okay. I'm a friend of the family. No, you're not, and I said he's not here. Don't make me call security. What a bitch. I need to get rid of her somehow. Hey, doofus. Oh, hi! So, how good an actor are you? The best! The very best! You know, that nurse in there, she said she loved you in all those movies, and that she always wished you'd give her a live performance. I knew it! She always gave me these strange looks. I thought it was contempt, but her face must just be crapping up from shyness. Yeah, that's definitely it. She'd love to see- I'm gonna have to oblige. Which movie do you think she'd like the best? Probably the silence of Lambert. Oh, I'm gonna be loud. Al Caswell, how oh, I wish I could speak. I have so many things left to say. My chest, no! It no can't thanks. Be. Women's magazines oh, make my man. brain melt. Thank you, thank you. You've Smoking got a great allowed. audience. Guess this place is a bit behind on healthcare regulations. That wasn't really an electrifying performance. I'll have to intervene somehow. Hey, doofus. Oh, hi! Hey, how about another show? Sure. Any suggestions? Definitely Jacob's bladder. I'm feeling the pressure. Oh, Jenny, everything is forgiven. You and me were like peas and carrots. Pretty sure she would object I'm to that. So full of your Rows and columns of files. Probably to easier to use the computer if I need Jenny, to do some digging. Where did you go? Oh, I don't feel so good. Thank you, thank you. You've been a great audience. Hey, doofus. Oh, hi! Hey, how about another show? Sure, any suggestions? 
Natural bald killers would be the obvious choice. Bald move. Hey, doofus. Oh, hi! Hey, how about another sh- Sure! How about the usual surprises? Business as usual. I can't believe you guys did all this for me. You know why, uh... What's the smell? Bacon? Oh, Bobby, my head hurts. I'm seizing. Thank you, thank you. You've been a great audience. Hey, doofus. Oh, hi. Hey, how about another show? Sure. Any suggestions? How about the usual surprises? Business as usual. I can't believe you guys did all this for me. You know why? Uh, what's the smell? Bacon? Oh, Bobby, my head hurts. I'm seizing! <laughs> Nurse, he's seizing! Oh, shit! Man, I feel like a total jackass. I'll have to make it up to the poor guy later. It's all right, Claude. Understood, sir. So, you managed to find me. I did. Well, let's get this over with then. How do you want your pictures? Shall I get some tubes to fill my face with? Will that suffice for your front page? I'm no journalist. Well, not yet anyway. Ah, she's but a cub. So, you're hoping for your big break. 
Surely this must be worth an internship at one of the big papers. Do you want me to call Thompson at the Times and get it over with? I still play golf with him every once in a while. That's not what this is about. It's personal. Sounds serious. Perhaps I should ask Claude to produce his gun. You know, Charles, the person most likely to be harmed by a gun tends to be its owner. Very true. That's something the Japs who captured me learned the hard way. Did my grandfather bail you out then too, or was that one of the few times where he didn't save your sorry ass? Hold on there. Explain yourself. You're willing to listen to something other than your own voice? I'm stunned. <sighs> I'm Kathy Rain. Joseph was my grandfather. Now I remember. You were at the funeral. I was. You were late. I needed my morning smoke. Besides, it's not like Grandpa was going anywhere. <laughs> oh, just look at her, Claude. She's absolutely fearless. That's Joseph's blood running through her veins. She certainly has a smart mouth, sir. I must say, you have me intrigued, Kathy. What can this old man help you with? Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather in 81? I wish I did, Kathy. You must know I did everything in my power to help. How do you think Mary Elizabeth could afford all that expensive treatment? MRIs, neurologists, say what you will about Joseph. But he was never rich. Strange. Grandma never mentioned that to me. She's just too proud. At first she refused. She was convinced that I had an agenda, that there were strings attached. And were there? Don't be silly. Despite all that had happened, I still loved Joseph dearly. I wanted to help. People from places like this have a deeply rooted mistrust in the rich, passed on for generations. In her eyes, I had become one of them. So that's all you know about the whole affair? Are you implying that there's more to know? I left the diagnosis to the professionals. Mrs. Rain accepted the healthcare, but asked me to stay out of everything else. So I did. I see. What can you tell me about your friendship with Grandpa? Joseph was the best friend I ever had. We grew up together. Married our high school sweethearts together. Went to war together. I can't even begin to count the number of times he's saved my life. I repaid the favor once or twice. But he came up ahead, no doubt. So, when did you two lose touch? I heard that something happened between you and him. What was it? <sighs> the truth is, Brian Rain happened. Sharon Evans happened. My parents? Yes. They ruined everything with their vile, destructive behavior. I couldn't have that around my daughter or my newborn grandson. Joseph was naive. He believed that anyone could be helped, that anyone could be reasoned with, given a chance. He was just too good, bless him. He should have been harder on Brian, more strict. I wouldn't mind teaching my old man some manners myself, wherever he is. Yes, of course. You must understand this better than anyone. People like your father simply cannot grasp how far their bad influence spreads. So our family started drifting apart. Eventually, my company grew much too large for this little town, and we moved on. Not long after that, your grandfather ended up in that wheelchair. That marked the end of our friendship obvious reasons. You bought a number of paintings by Lily Myers. Why? I'm known to dabble in art from time to time. Martha, my wife at the time, was enamored with the paintings. I believe she first saw them at the high school which the Myers girl attended. Anyway, after the poor girl killed herself, I bought the painting speculatively. When a young artist with any talent to speak of commits suicide, it can be a wet dream of certain connoisseurs. Shortly after procuring the art, 
I had it valued by an expert who determined that the value was three times the amount I bought it for. Today, I'm sure I would have made my money back tenfold or more if it wasn't for the art theft. What art theft? There was a burglary at the mansion I used to own here in town. It was all over the local news at the time. Well, shit. Eloquently put. Do you recognize the call sign, Cocky? Would be strange if I didn't, since I was the one who coined it. It belongs to a fellow named Jimmy Cochran. He was a coward, really. The nickname is somewhat of a bad joke. Perfect. Thanks. Tell me about Jimmy Cochran. Is he still alive? In a literal sense. He's been held in a mental institution for years. Let me guess. Since 81? Either 82 or 83. I'm fairly certain it was early 83. Do you remember the name of the institution? Something starting with an E. Uh, Emerson, Everton, or similar. Ingstrom? Ingstrom Psychiatric Hospital? Yes, that's the one. You know the place, Kathy. I do. My mother is in there. Sharon Evans? I had her committed about a year ago. I see. It must have taken a lot of courage to do that, Kathy. Mothers have a lot of power over us. More than most of us care to admit. I guess so. Do you know why Jimmy ended up in there? Some obsessive compulsive syndrome. He became fixated with circles, and started hurting himself, trying to scratch the circles out of his head. Creepy. I wonder what set him off. I think I'll check the place out tomorrow. Too late to head back to the city now. Can you tell me about the art theft? Well, somebody broke in, stole the paintings, and got out. Fairly clumsy job. Lots of broken windows. The strangest thing was, was that I had a Monet, a Rembrandt, and two paintings by Picasso, untouched. But every single painting by an unknown local artist, gone. That can't be a coincidence. Agreed. Somebody wanted those paintings badly. I assume there was an investigation. Yes, Sheriff Truman came by with his deputy a few hours later, but they didn't have much luck. They found a few hairs, which turned out to be from Raffles, the family dog. Some stunning police work right there. Indeed. There was a single witness, though, who said he could make out multiple burglars leaving the scene of the crime, but nothing more than that. So, I take it the case was closed? Yes. I honestly didn't care much one way or the other, given the fact that my most expensive pieces were safe and sound. I think I'll have a chat with the sheriff about the matter, if that's okay with you. Certainly. I'll call ahead and instruct him to give you everything you need. That'd be great. Thanks, Charles. Anytime. But I'm curious. What's your interest in the paintings? I've learned that my grandfather went to Sue and asked to see them. Right before he had his... injury. Is that so? Strange. Thanks, Charles. That's all I need for now. You're welcome, Kathy. Come back anytime. Well, this is it. This is where the picture was taken. I'm not sure what I expected to find here. I need to clear my head. What the? 
We've met before, haven't we? I don't think so, Mr. Clean. Unless seeing your face on a bottle of detergent counts. <laughs> Always the joker, aren't you, Kathy? Who are you? How do you know my name? You told me, remember? I feel... strange. Am I dreaming? It's the mending I will try to facilitate. You're not real. I'm lying asleep in my bed right now. Focus, Kathy. Listen to the drowned girl. You mean Lily? What about her? She's the anomaly, the missing refrain, the convergence point of things past and events yet to happen. Dial down the metaphors a notch, would you, Mr. Kafka? I get enough of that shit in English class. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't disappoint. I'm glad, given how much trouble I went through to be here. You see, my name was taken from me, so I claimed a color in its stead. The next time we meet, you'll know the exact hue of red. You're on the right path, Kathy. Follow your grandfather, and everything will work out in the end. Wait, what? How did I get here? Am I going crazy? Am I turning into mom? Hello? Creepy bald guy. Guess no one's home. What's this? It's you again. Come on in. No Nathan today? Nah, haven't seen Nate all day. Probably out in the woods. Question, Sue. Shoot. Do you know who the Red Man is? Oh, that's just Nate's imaginary friend. The Red Man has been around ever since my boy was little. I see. So there's no actual person in town he could be referring to? <laughs> no way! According to Nathan, the Red Man hasn't changed in 30 years. The Red Man actually exists. I met him in the forest. What? That's crazy talk. Stop kidding around. I am not in the mood. I think I'm gonna head off now. Sure thing, little cat. Come back anytime.
Hello, Sheriff. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? If you must. Do you know anything about the art theft in the Wade estate? Um, yes. Mr. Wade phoned ahead about that. Lenny! Yes, boss? Get the report from the burglary in the Wade estate back in 86? On it, boss. There you go, Kathy. Thanks, buddy. I gotta find this gold farb guy. Maybe he knows more about the burglary. I don't have anything else to say to her right now. Oh, hello, dear. Hi, Grandma. I sure, hon. Mind if we talk? Not at all. Does the name Franklin Goldfarb mean anything to you? Oh, that poor man. He used to be an upstanding citizen, you know. Now he's constantly drinking and keeps babbling on about that imaginary acting career of his. Sad thing. Do you know where I can find him? He's homeless, dear. Lost his job a few years ago and never really got back on his feet. Okay, now I know who you're talking about. Thanks, Grandma. Looks like I'm gonna have to have a chat with Goober. See you later, Grams. Take care, dear. I need a word, Miss Mendez. Wait, how do you know my name? It's written on that board behind you, genius. You have the eyesight of a bald eagle or something? Eh, what can I say? I'm a freak of nature. What happened to Goober, anyway? Who? The guy who had the seizure. Oh, he ran off somewhere. Kept babbling about a religious near-death experience. Okay, thanks. Hello, Father. Greetings, my child. I'm glad you decided to come here. Yeah, but just so you know, I'm not here to join your church or anything. Oh, I would never assume that. Good. So, with that out of the way, I have some questions. Anything you need. I'm Isaac Price. Kathy. Kathy Rain, but I'm guessing you figured that out already. I did. Rumors spread quickly around here. So, how can I be of service? I think I need to ask him about a few more things before I go.
Does the name Lily Myers mean anything to you? It does. I was a substitute teacher in her high school for some time before I was ordained. Really? Did you know her personally? We weren't close. I only knew her as much as a teacher would know any student. All right, so how did she seem toward the end? For one, she started skipping school a lot. And when she did show up, she was absent-minded and moody. She always looked depressed and hunched down like she had a whole world on her shoulders. Any idea of what caused this change? Not a clue. All I know is that when she returned from that last summer break, she was a whole different person. Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather in 81? It was the work of the devil, I'll say that much. Joseph was a kind man. He did not deserve such a fate. You heard my speech at the funeral, Kathy. I meant every word. He was a great man who did much good for this community. Did you know him personally? In a way. He and my father did charity work together. Joseph was around a lot when I was young. They collaborated on a few different projects for the homeless and for the troubled youth, among other things. So my grandfather was a member of the church? I wouldn't say that, no. He was a friend of the church, but he wasn't a religious man. He believed only in philanthropy. That being said, Joseph was the person who convinced me to become a priest. Really? Oh yes, I was a teenager back then, full of rebellion, every fiber of my being wanting to distance myself from my father. Joseph made me realize my sinful pride and showed me how I should follow my heart regardless of what others might think. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. Care to tell me the history of the church? I'd be happy to. The story is a fascinating one. This church was founded by my father, William T. Price, in the 70s. Back then, he made his living as a traveling salesman and was driving through this area as he'd done so many times before. However, this day was different. My father held dark thoughts in his mind. He was angry, thinking of evil deeds, even considering swerving off the road into a rock and ending it all. Then suddenly, divine intervention three bright lights appeared. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the sign of God. This epiphany was the moment my father had been waiting for. He sold all of his belongings and took me and my brother to live with him here in Conwell Springs. Soon thereafter, he built this church and started gathering followers. They began to refer to him as Father Bill. I take it that window up there resembles what he saw when he had this epiphany? Indeed. The stained glass window depicts the Holy Trinity as witnessed by my father. Do you know exactly when or where this event took place? Why do you ask? Oh, just curious. It's a captivating story. Well, it was in the spring of 1971, but my father never told anyone where. Okay, so what happened then? People flocked to Father Bill. He started teaching, writing scripture. The church flourished and continued to grow all the way up until his sudden death in 1983. That's when I stepped in to take leadership of the church. I take it that the church started declining after the death of Father Bill? Uh, yes, naturally so. With such a magnetic personality, he was irreplaceable. But I assure you, the church is still very much thriving. Looks kinda empty to me. It's not really our peak hours. What's up with you handing out pamphlets at funerals then? trying to reel people in at a weak moment? I'm going to assume you meant no disrespect, child. I'm simply providing divine guidance when it's needed the most. That's all I need for now, Father. May the Lord shine his light on you. God, old fast. Yep, I totally went there. Huh, <laughs> even I wouldn't stoop that low. Hello again, Goober. You again? Are you stalking me, girl? You pop up everywhere I go. I'll try to tone down the charm, but I can't promise anything. Huh, 
Yeah, you're quite the charmer. I know. I just said that, man. Listen, I feel kind of bad about the electrocution. Oh, that's what it was. What a cherry on top of my stellar performance. Yeah, it was uh, pretty convincing. So what brings you to the house of God? Come to repent? I'm afraid that ship has long since sailed, buddy. I had a few things I wanted to ask you about, though. Shoot, Missy! Your real name is Franklin Goldfarb, right? Oh, nobody calls me that. Regardless, I know for a fact that you were a witness to a burglary a few years back at the Wade Estate. Yeah, what about it? Why don't you tell me what you saw exactly? I heard the alarm go off, glass break, and then I saw three guys running away, carrying a bunch of stuff. What did they look like? It was dark. I don't know. They were definitely three big, bulky guys. They, uh... They what? Oh, nothing. That's it. Didn't see anything else. Bullshit. Spit it out. Well, one of those guys dropped his ring when running away. I sort of pawned it. A ring? What kind of ring? Platinum with an inscription. Two letters. B... something. Man, I don't remember. My photographic memory stopped working in 1979. Which pawn shop was that? Pete's Pawning and Plumbing. It closed down a long time ago, though. Owner left town. There's a coffee shop back there now. Too bad. Guess that's a dead end. Thanks anyway. Didn't I see two letters fitting that description recently? Not on a building. It was something small. Did the inscription on the ring look anything like this? Wow, actually exactly like that. Okay, that's all for now. See ya! Oh dear. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all. Do you recognize the acronym BH? It's on Dad's lighter. Yes, dear. It means the black hats. They're those ruffians on motorcycles whom your father is associated with. Oh, his biker gang. That makes sense. See you later, Grams. Take care, dear. Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? What can you tell me about the Black Hats? They've caused us trouble from time to time, but they've been kind of quiet lately. We put a few of their captains in the slammer over the years, but we never managed to find enough dirt on their leader. Bo Brunson. Big Bo. Do you know where I can find them? Yeah, hold on. Let me just find a map. Got it. Thanks. Well, gotta go. See ya. Sweet bud incoming! Like hell I am, I'm nobody's property. You sure? Doesn't she look like a sweet butt? Little slut? I think she does. Psst. Or what? You tell your daddy on me? Or you'll be scraping your balls off the floor, you fucking pig. 
Oh, I love it when they play hard to get. Let go of me! What the hell's going on out here? Nothing, Prez. Just having a bit of fun with this gash here. I suggest you leash that dog of yours. For fuck's sake, Prospect. Not again. Get the hell out of here. Sorry, boss. I'll go. Fuck. That hurt you, cunt. He'll be disciplined for that. He better be. I take it your bow? I am. And who are you, darling? Kathy Rain. Bullshit. She lives in the city with her deranged mother. Who are you, really? Did the Vandals send you? No, they didn't. I am Kathy Rain. Prove it, then. Well, I would, but I left my ID back home. <laughs> That's convenient. I think I've wasted enough time with you. I need to figure out some proof. This proof enough for you? I'll be damned. That's Brian's lighter, all right. Sorry about the paranoia. We've had some problems with the vandals lately. I get it. Can't be too careful. So, that's your ride out there. Corley Motors, right? 78? 76. You got the same taste as your old man. He always rolled Corleys. Probably the only thing he and I have in common. <laughs> you set up those mods yourself? Looks custom made for your uh, small frame. Yeah, took some time to get the measurements right. I imagine so. Girls like you don't often ride heavy bikes. I'm not most girls. Ain't that the truth. Most girls don't just waltz into places like this either. I guess you'd know. Anyway, I had some questions for you in the club. Go ahead then. Your old man was a good brother, so I'll indulge you for now. Tell me, how long have you been the president of this club? Fifteen years now, give or take. VP for ten before that. Good. Then you can tell me why you stole Lily Meyer's paintings from Charles Wade in 86. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but I'd recommend you be careful with wild accusations like that. Oh, cut the bullcrap. I know it was you. I did some digging and found evidence pointing to the club. Is that so? Better be a good girl and present it to the sheriff, then. I couldn't care less about ratting you out, though. I just need to know what you did with the art. I have no intention of discussing your delusions as if they were facts, girl. Don't make me tell you again. All right, I'm gonna hit the road. Right on. I have some business to take care of, but make yourself at home. Thanks, Bo. See you around. Hey, Brian's girl. Yeah? I overheard you. I'm Emmett. Hey. The boss man isn't usually that grumpy. He's got a lot on his mind. But I think I may know of a way to loosen him up. I'm all ears, buddy. Well... Bo and Brian are the double B's, as we used to call them. <laughs> they used to have this drink together. Brian came up with it. He called it a bloodier Mary. Hmm, sounds like my kind of drink. Yeah, it's basically a bloody Mary, but with pig blood instead of tomato juice. I take that back. Gross. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's just a bloody Mary, but with a special ingredient added to it. If you say that special ingredient is blood, I will literally punch you. <laughs> no. Brian refused to tell anyone what it was. He only made it for special occasions. It's probably something uncommon, like a rare herb or some kind of expensive spice. So let me guess. If I can produce this drink for Bo, you think he would help me out? It'll make him remember Brian. Which should go a long way. He hasn't had that drink since your old man disappeared. Brian was like a son to him. The boss would have died for him back in the day. If you could recall the good times with your father, he might change his mind. I guess it could be worth a try. But wait, why are you helping me? 
You're Brian's kid. That means you're family. We take care of family. Well, how was that drink compared with a regular Bloody Mary? Tasted a bit more like pepper and had a punch to it. It usually gave some pretty nasty hangovers. Oh, if you had a lot of them, you'd hallucinate some crazy shit. Pretty wild. Trippy. Thanks. You're welcome, darling. Sorry, endangered flower, but I, uh, I really need to make a drink. I'd like a Bloody Mary. Come right up. Oh, and add this, will you? Just something I like for flavor. Put it in a blender. Whatever you say. One Bloody Mary. Enjoy. Thanks, buddy. The club will cover that, Jose. Sure thing, VP. Thanks again, Emmett. You got it. Hey, Bo. I've got something for you. I recognize that smell. You found your dad's recipe. Something like that. Man, is this a trip down memory lane? I keep expecting Brian to walk in here any second. You know, all this nostalgia is making me remember how much I really owe your old man. Yeah? Yeah. So, here's the deal. In 86, Carl, my VP at the time, came to me and said he had a job lined up for the club. Some guy had offered him good dough for stealing a bunch of paintings for a mansion. He needed two brothers for the job. I was busy with other things at the time, so I gave my permission as long as the club got the usual cut. He returned a week later with a nice wad of cash. I didn't realize it was Wade he had knocked off until I read the paper. If I had known that, I'd advised against it. Wade is a powerful man with friends in city council. There's no reason to piss him off. Got it. So what do you know about the guy who hired you for the job? Not much. Carl said it was some bearded preacher. Whoa, Isaac from the Church of the Holy Trinity? Could be. I don't know who that is. It was a priest. I know that much. Thanks, Bo. I'm going to follow up on this right away. That's it? You're not gonna ask me about what happened to your old man? Not even curious? I couldn't give two shits about that asshole. Bullshit. Don't expect anyone to believe you're that angry with someone you don't give two shits about. Either he's dead or he abandoned me. Do any of those options look appealing to you? They don't, but you should know that no one from the club had anything to do with it. I meant it when I said Brian was a good brother. He had no enemies here. Not then, and not now. Comforting to hear, Mr. President. Shut up and listen, girl. I'm trying to tell you something. Brian used to talk about heading to Mexico, about riding off into the sunset and getting away from all his newfound responsibilities. And I think part of him was serious. You deserve to know that there's a chance he's still out there somewhere. Sure. Let's hope that bastard is living it up somewhere. <sighs> Just take care of yourself, you hear? You too. That day went by fast. I think I'm going to ask if I can stay the night at Grandma's. Hello, sweetheart. Hey, Grandma. It got kind of late. Would it be okay if I stay the night? Of course, dear. Have a seat. I'll make you something to eat. Oh, you're the best. I'm starving. Do 
you see? You are both unwanted, both discarded. Good. Lick the flames, buddy boy. Lick the flames and feel the hatred burn. Lily's painting, burning, and the kid from the cemetery. It's gotta mean something. <laughs>